Hello and welcome to ElectroNerds Academy. In today's video, we will be interfacing the HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor with an Arduino. This sensor is perfect for measuring distances and can be used in a variety of projects like obstacle avoiding robots, fluid level detection, object counting, and much more. So let's dive right in. Here is what our sensor looks like. The HCSR04 provides excellent non-contact range detection between 2 cm to 400 cm, approximately 13 feet, with an accuracy of 3 mm. One transducer acts as a transmitter, converting the electrical signal into 40 kHz ultrasonic sound pulses. The other transducer acts as a receiver, listening for the echo of these transmitted pulses. Humans cannot hear ultrasonic sound pulses as our ears are sensitive to sound waves with frequencies ranging from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. However, animals like bats and dolphins use this same principle to examine their surroundings. Our sensor has four pins, VCC and GND for power, the trigger pin to initiate ultrasonic sound pulses, and the echo pin to receive the reflected pulses. Now let's explore how to calculate the distance to an object using this sensor. After supplying 5 volts and ground to the VCC and GND terminals, we set the trigger pin high, 5 volts for about 10 microseconds, then set it to low. Essentially, we send a high pulse of 10 microseconds over the trigger pin. When the module receives the trigger pulse, it transmits an ultrasonic burst of 8 pulses at 40 kHz. This 8 pulse pattern is designed to distinguish the transmitted pulses from ambient ultrasonic noise. These pulses travel through the air away from the transmitter, while the echo pin goes high to initiate the echo back signal. If the pulses are reflected back, the echo pin goes low upon receiving the signal. This generates a pulse on the echo pin whose width determines the time taken to receive the echoed signal. If the transmitted pulses are not reflected back, the echo signal times out and goes low after 38 milliseconds, indicating no obstruction within the sensor's range. Suppose we receive a pulse of 900 microseconds width on the echo pin. We can calculate the distance using the familiar speed formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. Rearranging this formula, we find that distance equals speed multiplied by time. With the time value, 900 microseconds, and the speed of sound, 0.0340 centimeter per microseconds, we can calculate the distance in centimeters. However, the echo pulse represents the total time for the signal to travel to the object and back. So we divide the time by two, since we only want to find the distance of the object from the sensor. On the back of the module, we have three ICs and several passive components like resistors and capacitors. The leftmost IC is the op-amp LM324, used to compare and amplify echoed signals, as the echoed signals have low magnitude. In the middle, there's a small microcontroller for detecting the trigger pulse and producing eight ultrasonic pulses. On the rightmost side, there's a voltage driver IC, MAX232, typically used for serial communication, but here used as a voltage booster to power the transmitter. Now, let's implement everything we've learned in a small project. We'll start by connecting our HCSR04 sensor to the Arduino. The connections are straightforward. Connect the VCC and GND terminals to the 5 volts and GND terminals on the Arduino. Then, connect the trigger and echo pins to digital pins 10 and 9 on the Arduino, respectively. Next, let's move on to programming our Arduino. We'll begin by declaring an integer variable named distance and a long variable named duration. The long data type is used when we need to store large integer numbers that exceed the capacity of the int type. In the setup function, we first initialize serial communication and set the baud rate to 9600. Then we set pin 10 connected to the trigger pin as an output and pin 9 connected to the echo pin as an input. In the loop function, we start by setting the trigger pin low to ensure a clean high pulse. We add a small delay of about 2 microseconds using the delay microseconds function. After the delay, we set the trigger pin to high, wait for 10 microseconds, and set it to low again. Now, we need to calculate the duration of the pulse on the echo pin. For this, we use the pulse in function. This function reads a pulse, either high or low, on a specified pin and returns the length of the pulse in microseconds. It takes two parameters, the pin number and the type of pulse, high or low. For example, if the type is high, pulse in waits for the pin to go high, starts timing, waits for the pin to go low, 
and then stops timing. It returns the length of the pulse in microseconds, or zero if no complete pulse was received within the timeout, which is around three seconds. We use the pulse in function on the echo pin with the pulse type set to high and save its output to the duration variable. With the duration in microseconds, we apply the formula we discussed earlier to calculate the distance in centimeters. Note that we use 0 0.0340 centimeters per microsecond as the speed of sound instead of 340 meters per second. This is because we want the distance in centimeters and the duration of the pulse is in microseconds. Finally, we display the distance in centimeters on the serial monitor and upload the code to our Arduino. After successfully uploading the code, we open the serial monitor. Next, we place an object in front of the sensor and measure its distance using a ruler or scale. The measured distance should be very close to the readings on the serial monitor. Additionally, as we move the object back and forth, the distance values on the serial monitor should accurately reflect the changes in distance. This demonstrates the sensor's ability to provide real-time distance measurements with precision. Although this sensor is great, it has some limitations. If the distance between the sensor and the object is greater than 13 feet, it won't detect the object. If the object's reflective surface is at a shallow angle, the sound won't reflect back to the sensor. If the object is too small to reflect enough sound, the readings won't be accurate. Additionally, if the sensor is mounted low, sound may reflect off the floor. Soft, irregular surfaces, like stuffed animals, that absorb sound rather than reflect it can also be problematic. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos, and we'll see you next time.